Hello Internet. Today we're going to be talking about how I think I found the best book I've ever read, and that might have changed my life for the best lately. A book that took me, I think, like two and a half years to finish. A book that fell within a genre I haven't visited for quite a while now. And lastly, a book that, while I love autobiographies, even though it wasn't one, really struck something in me and was uh, oddly, scarily relatable. Hey Internet, my name is Mark. I don't know what title I go by now, a habitual hobbyist, a technical consultant who still wants to make YouTube videos and work on so I don't know. But welcome to the channel. At the end of every month, I'm doing a reading ramble where even if I don't read anything, I just tell you my thoughts, reflections. We have a lot of those today. Now it's funny because February is the shortest month of the year, and yet it's the first month in which I've finished my goal of reading four books. So let's talk about those. On a quick note, I've kind of restored my habits, sort of. Now I'm gonna talk about Hello Habits extensively. Uh, and I'll save that one for the end, but that is something that has changed my life, arguably will leave an impact for a very long time. I have started reading every single day, these last two weeks. The thing I mentioned in the past about reading on the subway, I've done that more. Still not every time, but more, and that's been super helpful. I kind of have to view it as I need to make sure I use this time wisely. And also, I would consider my only vice arguably to be caffeine. And so I have to be reading if I want to be drinking caffeine, whether that be the powder stuff I have or a can that I get when I'm at the deli. And that has worked unsurprisingly very well. Only one of these four books, if you've been following, are one of the books I set out to read, ironically. And that is uh, not the one we're gonna start with. The first one we're gonna start with is American Assassin by Vince Flynn. Long story short, it's a thriller book. Uh, this is the genre I haven't returned to for a while. Thriller, fiction, whatever you wanna call it. A friend of mine mentioned you should, you know, read books for leisure. And I was like, but philosophy and self-help, I guess that's the category you'd call them under, but self-help books, all that, those are leisure for me. But they're like, no, like read something fun. And I think leisure and fun are definitely two very different things. What this showed me is that a book can be just as gripping as a TV show. I watched the movie American Assassin probably a year and a half ago, I'd say. Uh, and I recently rewatched it after I finished the book. The book was better, even though I saw the movie first. But the, the, I really liked the movie specifically for the first 20 minutes of it. Not gonna go into that. The, the material that you read, making sure it's engaging is very important. Um, if you're a thriller, I guess I'd recommend it. It was just a good read. I enjoyed it. Um, I like thrillers, I guess, apparently. <laughs> yeah, so the, the big takeaway when I started reading this as much as I did, for example, I'd bring it on the subway with letters to Milena, and I'd always choose I'd always choose this one. And I was like, okay, well, clearly I can make the time to read. I just need to make sure I'm engaging with the material properly, if you will. And now uh, I wanna read one of these every month. There are like 12 of them. Unfortunately, the author has passed, but I guess someone else picked up the, picked up the, the steam for those. My language functions really went out the window with this one, but like someone picked up the torch, the torch was passed on. Like, I don't know what was going on. <laughs> and I'll be doing it on my Kindle. I don't want to get all these physical books, but I will hold on to this for a little while. Next up is No Longer Human. When I went to the bookstore, Barnes and Nobles, I went specifically to get American Assassin, and then I saw this. It's been on my Amazon list for ages. A few years ago, I saw it on, I think, one of PewDiePie's like book club things, ages ago. I forget what he said about it. I forget why I was intrigued, but I was like, you know what? Kind of small, I'll get it. I don't really know how to explain it. It's sort of like a pseudo autobiography. Uh, it's three notebooks of this guy his life and the author I guess I, I can't tell if it's real or not <laughs> reminded me why I like autobiographies so much you can really connect with autobiographies my freshman year of college one of the classes I took was this text and ideas class and we read a bunch of autobiographies and I was like wow I'm gonna hate this and then I loved it and what I like so much is that you can connect with the authors you can connect with their stories what what problems they've been through etc etc the note of introspection will come back to you but the introspection of the the protagonist for lack of a better word I could often relate to at times which sometimes was like I maybe I shouldn't be relating to this yeah, it was truly impactful and you get this one perspective and there are so many times in the book where you're like, I don't think his perspective is correct, why these people are reacting to him and whatnot. There was a, an important notion of just everything passes. It just, it was a very nice wrap up to everything because there was no true conclusion. Well, there was, but anyway. It's a short read. I don't want to call it an autobiography, but it was very good. Okay. <laughs> Hello Habits. Fumio Sasaki. I went to Barnes and Noble's end of last month. I met, met a friend in the area and I walked in and I was like, okay, I'm not gonna buy any books. I'm just gonna see what's up. But then I saw this book, said Habits. <laughs> it's by a Japanese author and it's from a minimalist and it's a blue book. And I was like, I'm gonna just get it. I'll read it in a few months. But then I started reading it when I was waiting for my friend and I was like, hey, <laughs> not bad. And I took a lot of notes on it. <laughs> 
This book, whew, remarkably be candid. One of the things I love so much about this book is A, how much I connect to it. This author will say things and I'm just thinking that that's what I think. That's the same thought process I have. It comes down to small things like when I travel, I would bring five books with me so I didn't run out and then I end up not reading one. But also, more importantly, and especially the last chapter, chapter four, he just talks about talent. And all of these ideas that I have had, both the ones I've been able to articulate and the ones I haven't been able to articulate, he just, Ah, he ties the bow so nicely about how talents don't really exist. Talent is something you build. Because of this book, I've gone out every single morning, except for Sundays, those are my rest days, and done something in a nearby playground. The other day I did a wall spin on a tree. I posted this on Instagram, follow me if you want. These notions that being consistent, if I do a couple push-ups every single day, some kind of calisthenics work every single day, then talent is built up over that. Then there's the notion of having a knack for things. And this is one of the only ideas in the book that I have never thought of or never come across. For example, I might have a knack for some physical things. In parkour, I found that there are some things I've been able to pick up quickly, or some things I haven't. And then there's singing, something I've never been able to pick up easily and never thought to pursue. I have a knack for one thing, but not a knack for the other. However, I can still be talented in both. But of course, it has its limits. 20 pages in, he's talking about this notion of willpower. Can it actually run out? Kind of argues that no, it can't. And if it can, it's better to think of willpower as though it can't. Unlike a book called Power of Habit, I really love habits, and apparently I love books about habits. This author's main narrative is introspection, his own habits, how he quit drinking, why he enjoys running, endurance versus effort, how he views talent and knack. And that introspection is really well articulated, and especially for a translated version of the book. So huge props to the translator. It's almost scary how in parallel my habits and thought processes are with the authors. The notion how he thinks, I'm a night person but became a morning person. That's what I'm realizing too. You know, I can still become a morning person simply because I really, really want to. Structure of the book, by the way, the first two chapters, the first one's about willpower, the second one is about like what habits are. And then chapter three is 50 steps for acquiring new habits, which is the longest chapter. It's like two thirds of the book. They're very well structured, by the way, these tips, they each build off of each other. He references earlier tips in later tips. That must have been a pain to organize. But one of the things that's really helped me with this waking up, for example, is, okay, two of the things. A, reminder, of what Duhigg talks about in Power of Habit, from keystone habits to linking habits, uh, et cetera, et cetera. All the reminders in this book, plus the introspection are kind of like, okay, right, this is, this is why I'm doing these things. And secondly, there's this notion of awareness. I've always thought, okay, don't think about it. Just go for a run, right? Wake up, don't think about it, don't snooze, just get up and get your clothes on and get outside. But the author talks about it as don't bring awareness into the equation. Don't let yourself question anything. Don't let yourself debate. I can't do justice to the ideas and how well they're articulated here. If you're into habits, highly recommend. There's also this idea I've always had of time travel where you, and this is something that really helped me lose weight. I pictured this event in the future and I thought, okay, in that moment, I'm gonna wish so badly I could just lose weight. And that helped me get up at 6.15 a.m. for boxing. If I could reiterate all the ideas in this book, I'd have to make a video about it, but also I think it's worth the read because again, the author just, and lastly, just toward the end, throughout the book, another idea that's pretty important right now, especially just as I finish the video and I take a few days of break and then the next video takes two weeks by accident, is no breaks between videos. Sasaki talks about many people's experiences with once you finish one thing, you don't take a break. Someone who has a habit of writing 10 pages a day, no matter what, doesn't stop when they finish their current manuscript five pages in, they write the next five pages because that's the habit. That's always how I've been, but a lot of people, nothing against them, have always told me, dude, like, you know, take a break, sit back. When you finish a video, like, chill for a second. You finished a video. I mean, I tell myself that. You don't need to just start on the next one. I think I do. But there's just something to habits that when you get them down, it's not a pain anymore. This last week of waking up early and going to the park, sure, it's been a little painful, but it's really been enjoyable because I get back and I can enjoy the rest of my day, get those three hours in the morning back, so to speak. There will come a morning where I do not want to get up, but I'm gonna have to do it anyway. And I really hope that I can at that moment. I'm gonna unironically miss reading this book and this is something I'm gonna keep with me at all times. Like this will live on my desk now. It just, it was super impactful for me. One of, if not the best, habits, self-help, psychology books I've read. 
as of late. Okay, so now that uh, half the video was about one book, let's spend three minutes on this one. Finishing this book was an accomplishment simply because I've been reading it for so goddamn long. Something I just realized like a month ago was it's literally a compilation of letters. It's not a book, it's just a compilation of letters. It occurred to me that maybe I should go through reading it and pick and choose what parts I want to read. I told myself, okay, why am I reading this? Well, I want to hear how Kafka talks about his thoughts. I want to hear how Kafka articulates himself. And so whenever anything comes up about, sorry, this is Franz Kafka's letters to Milena, his translator, who he falls in love with. That's the shortest summary I can give. You just see how he articulates emotion and I constantly read those. I've highlighted them here and there. But whenever something comes up about the doctor didn't respond to me, something about stamp collections, I just skip it. Sometimes that involves skipping a whole page at a time. Reading should be enjoyable. Those parts, I would get to them and then stop reading the book because that's not why I'm reading it. And I finished it and it was all the more impactful. Just seeing the end and how his letters and transponents cuts off. Like it's the whole, 99% of the book is within four months. And then there's like four more letters that are over like three years. It's, it's jarring in a way. And it's just funny, it took me two and a half years to read a book that technically happened over four months, or a compilation of letters, I should say. Reminds me what it's like to be human. Alongside reading a book where someone feels ostracized about not being a human. For this video, I'm not gonna bother about making it cool edits and whatever. I really just wanna talk about these books and that's what I'm just gonna be. I'm gonna try my best not to care about watch time or statistics on this one. All right, um, honorable mention, I read two pages of this this month on the train the other day. I have yet to think about how I'm gonna read this book. What's been really nice is revisiting the mentality that when I was a kid, I read all these easy, uh, straightforward, simple books. So, you know, these two Japanese goals are important. I've been getting really into, not fitness lately, but I've been straying away from boxing and kickboxing and back into why I want to work out. And I got a book called Combat Martial Philosophy. I'm through the first two chapters. It's it's a very easy read. Like it's a big book, but the font is this big. And it's just got, again, kind of like Hello Habits, these, these lessons to think about. And I'm going into it with my own biases. And so I'll, there are already have been things where I'm like, ooh, I like that idea. I'm going to think about it that way. And I don't like that idea. <sighs> big yikes. It's philosophical approach to combat and self-defense. Philosophical. I love it. I also got this complete calisthenics book because I really want to be doing calisthenics every morning. This isn't really important to the reading ramble. It's just a book. I'm not going to read it front to cover. Sorry, front to back, cover to cover. Yeah, I, I prefer things in book form rather than looking up videos. Reading goals from March. I really haven't thought about this. I think I'm going to go with One American Assassin and I'll get that on my Kindle so that I can like always have that with me. Now that I have confidence with my reading habit, I probably shouldn't try and tackle both Letters from a Stoic and Nerds Per Minute, because Nerds Per Minute is now a book that I'm choosing to prioritize to read, not being unable to read Letters from a Stoic. We'll put this one off for now. I think one hefty book for a month is good. I shouldn't focus on quantity, you know, four books a month. I should be focusing on quality of books. So I'll put Stoic aside. Just making that conscious decision now. And now that I have a habit I can trust, soon. It'll be part of the habit I can trust. Well, this is a really weird feeling. I was reading so many books at the same time and I finished them and now I don't, I don't have, I don't have letters to Milena to say I can finish again. Very strange. I'm gonna, you know what, I'm gonna throw the My Hero Academia manga on here and have a wild card. So my goal with this will just be to, you know, sit down and read it, not study it, just read it. Even if that's just flipping through the pictures and I finish it in a day, that'll be good enough for me. I'm caught up on my reading goal on Goodreads, love that. I have books on my shelf, love that too. I'll put the names of the books in the description, not links, because purchase them forever from wherever you want to purchase them. Support local bookstores if you can. I'm a big proponent of that. I don't really have a local one really nearby except for Barnes and Nobles. Let me know what you're reading or what habits you've been working on, what habits you've gotten back. So yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you in those upcoming videos. Without further ado, have a good one. And as always, don't forget to stay awesome. See you in a month, if not sooner.